Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. The minute that you declare that you're going to walk with God, the devil comes after you. I'm not going to stand here and tell you if you receive Christ tonight that all your problems are over. Some of them are over, but a different kind is going to begin. And you say, well, then why do I want to receive Jesus? Because your worst day with him will be better than your best day ever was without him. You know, right thinking can enable you and wrong thinking can disable you. It's amazing what you won't do if you think you can't. I mentioned that my mom knew that my dad was abusing me when I was growing up, but she never did anything about it. And 30 years after I left home, she finally found the courage to say something to me. And she said, I'm sorry for what I let your dad do to you. I didn't think that I could face the scandal. And I didn't think that I could take care of you and your brother. So her thinking, her wrong thinking, her wrong mindset ruined many lives. She could have just as easily said, I believe I can do this and taken a step of faith and trusted God and things could have turned out differently for a lot of people. Now things have turned out good for me. I stuck with God and fought through a lot of things, but I had a brother nine, nine years younger than me who sadly ended his own life and things could have been different for him, but he never had the right kind of training growing up and he got on drugs when he was 17 and on alcohol and just never could get free from it. So it's very important that we realize how much our thoughts affect our actions, our attitudes, our moods. They literally are the forerunner for everything that we do or everything that we don't do. Now this teaching is taken from the story of the Israelites who the Bible plainly says in Deuteronomy chapter one, verse two, that it, it is only 11 days journey from Horeb by way of Mount Seir to Kadesh Barnea on Canaan's border, yet Israel took 40 years to get there. Why would somebody take 40 years trying to make an 11 day trip? <laughs> Any of you feel like You've been going around the same mountain way too long. In verse six of that same chapter, God actually spoke through Moses and said, you've stayed long enough at this mountain. And so I want to start tonight by saying to some of you, you've stayed long enough at the same place. You've been feeling sorry for yourself way too long. You've been blaming somebody else way too long. <laughs> You've been complaining way too long. <laughs> Come on, it's time for some change. And I want you to remember this, God can't change anything if we won't change. It's useless to keep praying for God to change everything if you're not going to be willing to do or if I'm not going to be willing to do whatever God asks me to do. So I actually have 10 of these wrong mindsets and I'm going to try to turn them into the way that you should think rather than the way that you shouldn't think. And I hope to get through all 10 by the time I leave tomorrow afternoon. But if I don't, We can always finish it on TV. <laughs> I want to talk to you tonight about getting your mind off of the road behind you. Letting go of what lies behind and not basing your future on your past or, or even on what's going on in your life right now. See, some of you are stuck. You're just stuck. You've been in the same place for so long, going around and around the same mountain, that 
you've dug a rut and there's no way that you feel that you can get out of it. But it's time for you to let God take you out of that place to a brand new beginning in your life. Amen? The Bible says that God called the Israelites out of Egypt to take them in to the promised land. I brought you out to take you in. God has brought you out of something to take you into something better. But you know what? You have to let go of the old <clears throat> in order to take hold of the new. Amen? Sometimes we feel pulled in two different directions because God's trying to pull us forward and we keep hanging on to what's back here. You always have to give up something to get something. Amen? You almost always have to leave something to go somewhere. <laughs> but the thing about God that, well, it's, he knows what he's doing, of course, but it's, it's not too easy as he'll call you out of something before he shows you what you're going into. And so there comes fear. Like he told Abraham, leave the place where you're at and go to the place that I will show you. Are there any of you like that right now? You've let go of one thing behind you and now you just feel like you're just in total confusion and you don't know what's next or what you're gonna do. And Well, you know what? You don't have to know because God knows. And all he really wants to hear from you is I trust you. Not why, God, why, but I trust you. Now, our mind has a lot to do with how fast we make it from Egypt through the wilderness to the promised land. I'm sure you've all heard of the promised land. I don't know about you, but after several years of being in church, I got so tired of hearing about the promises, but never feeling like I actually possessed them. I heard about freedom all the time, but I wasn't free. <laughs> I heard that God wanted to bless me, but Financially, we were just hand to mouth and paycheck to paycheck, and I heard about all these things, and I believed them, or I thought I did, but they never seemed to happen in my life. Anybody ever feel like that? You just, I mean, just be honest. You get a little tired of the rah, rah, rah in church, and you know. It's nice while you're there, but when you go home, you still got the same mess, and you just, you, you, you want to possess the promises. You don't want to just hear somebody talk about it. You want to possess it. Well, the Israelites wanted to possess what God called the promised land, and it was a land that he said was flowing with milk and honey, which meant every good thing. God wants us to have every good thing. The Bible says, I is not here eye has not seen, ear has not heard all the good things that God already has made ready, prepared, and stored up for those who love him. But the interesting thing about the word possess that the Israelites didn't understand, and I don't think we understand it a lot, the word possess actually means to dispossess the current occupants. <laughs> So in other words, they had to be ready for war in order to take that land that God promised them because enemies of God were already living on that land. Amen? And so the Bible says that God took them the long hard way through the desert instead of a, a route that was much shorter and he did it on purpose because they were not ready yet for war. And see, I've been getting real bothered in my spirit lately, and so I know that I've got to do some preaching on this. Not all tonight, but I'll mention it. You know, a lot of Christians aren't ready for war. They're just, <laughs> sometimes I feel like I'm in a cosmic battle between Satan and God. 
and they're both trying to win, and I'm here in the middle deciding who I'm gonna follow. Am I gonna listen to the lies of Satan, or am I gonna believe the promises of God and stand firm and go with him? You gotta dispossess the current occupants before you can possess the promises of God. And it, we gotta be ready for war. So God took them the long, hard way because they weren't ready for that yet. He knew that they were still too immature to really take a stand and not be moved by anything that they saw or felt and believe God. And so they ended up out in the wilderness whining, blaming, complaining, murmuring, grumbling. And you'll see when I get to the part on complaining that the word complain means to remain. Huh. <laughs> eh? Eh? Complain and remain. Praise and be raised. That's my own special quote. <laughs> the more we complain, the more we stay right where we're at. And so they just wandered around out there for 40 years when it was an 11 day journey because they had wrong mindsets. They had a wrong mental attitude. They didn't know how to think right. So before we get into the specifics of these different attitudes. Let's just talk for a minute about the mind. Who, who could stand it if I talked for a minute about the mind? Please do, right? Okay. Well, Proverbs 23, 7 says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. That's a very interesting scripture. Colossians 3, 1 and 2 says, if then you've been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above. That means right things, not on the things that are upon the earth. Now let's read it again. Set your mind, and I really like what the Amplified says, set your mind and keep it set. See, it's easy to go on a diet on Sunday night after dinner. <laughs> but the problem starts by Tuesday when you want to eat everything on the table and then eat the table. <laughs> okay, I'm going to tell you a secret. You're not going to like this part, but here it comes anyway. <laughs> if you want to have real victory, you're going to have to be willing to hurt a little bit. And see, the Israelites didn't want to hurt, and we don't want to hurt. So the devil gives us nine different ways to get out of hurting. And you know, even if you just take complaining, you know, if you're going through something and you just keep your mouth shut about it and you're just talking to God about it and not murmuring and complaining, it's hard. It's like there's no relief valve for the pressure in our soul. But if we can just tell somebody <laughs> how bad we got it and how bad we feel and oh my gosh, if they, if they would just feel a little sorry for us now, the flesh is like mm -hmm. <laughs> You got your fix and then you go around the mountain one more time. <laughs> I mean, if you agree, it's hard when you're hurting just to say, God, I just wanna get through this and get it over with. And so I'm gonna just talk to you about it, not grumble and complain. There's all different kinds of suffering, but we, I just, I'm very concerned because it seems to me like, and of course it's not everybody, there's a lot of you out there that are very strong and you stand firm and you stand your ground and you're awesome, mature Christians, but I think we all know that the majority are not like that. And I think that people are just getting wimpier and weaker and, you know, they just can't take very much and they're ready to quit and, you know, 
if you don't do this today, God, then I'm out of here. I'm, I can't do this anymore. Everything's too hard. And, you know, we've got to understand that you got to be ready for war. The minute that you declare that you're going to walk with God, the devil comes after you. I'm not going to stand here and tell you if you receive Christ tonight that all your problems are over. Some of them are over, but a different kind is going to begin. And you say, well, then why do I want to receive Jesus? Because your worst day with him will be better than your best day ever was without him. Because here's the thing. Without Christ, you're stuck in the place you're at. And your life is nothing but misery from now until you draw your last breath. And if you haven't received Christ by the time you do that, then the real misery starts. Yes, there's a place called hell. We don't talk enough about that either. I'd rather scare the hell out of somebody than to sit and watch them go to hell. Amen. And every once in a while, we, a good message, hell, fire, and brimstone, like they used to call it, would be good for us. Amen. I mean, what, what, what do people think they're doing? I mean, the, the amount of time that you have here on earth is absolutely nothing. It's like one grain of sand on all the beaches in the world compared to forever. And we need to spend our now time here getting ready for there. And I tell you, more than anything, we need to get our eyes off of ourselves, get your mind off yourself, and on to what you can do for somebody else. I love the song that Natalie sang tonight. You can be a miracle. Everybody wants a miracle, but how about being a miracle? How about being one for somebody else? And yes, if you do that, you will live a sacrificial life, but you'll be so full and fruitful on the inside you see, a wilderness can be a literal place like a desert, but many people have a wilderness in their soul. Everything is dry and barren, and no matter what they do, even, even people, there's so many unhappy Christians. And really, that's an oxymoron. I mean, Christians should be the happiest people on the face of the earth, and yet they're not. And it's because we really just Forget that the enemy's after us all the time. He's not going to win. The purpose that Jesus came was to destroy the works of the wicked one. We've already got the victory, but we are going to have to stand our ground. And we are more than conquerors through Christ who loves us. That's why we need to get a little bit sassy with our souls and say, why so downcast, oh my soul? Get a smile on your face, body, and get out there and count your blessings and stop whining over every little thing that goes wrong in your life. You say, well, Joyce, if you had my life, you wouldn't be standing up there saying that. Well, you don't know what my life is like. You don't know. I tell you, there's a lot more to it than this little part right here. That I can tell you for sure. If you think the devil gets after you, you ought to try preaching this stuff and see if he gets after you. <laughs> so you got, you got to set your mind. I am going all the way through to victory. I am not going to quit. I am not going to give up. <laughs> By the grace of God, I am going to be who God wants me to be, do what he wants me to do, and have what he wants me to have. And that's why it doesn't matter anything that's happened to you previous to this moment right here. If it's bad stuff you didn't like, you need to let go of it. And you need to say, this is the first day of the rest of my life. And I am not going to live the rest of it like I've lived the previous part of it. Mindsets are an interesting thing. You need to, you, we, we set ourselves up sometimes for just a bad day. 
Uh, yeah, I don't want anybody to take this wrong because I know sometimes the, an the anniversary of the death of a loved one can be painful for people. But my aunt, who's gone home to be with the Lord, she, every year, I mean, this was still like 15, 20 years after my uncle passed. And he was a Christian man. She knew he was in heaven. She would plan to have a bad day on that day. I mean, she would tell me two weeks out, now you know, honey, <laughs> next so-and-so is when Uncle Marvin passed, and you know that's going to be a hard day for me. <laughs> well, I understand that things like that can be hard, but I also understand that a little bit of right thinking can change that. Amen? Amen? How many of you agree that sometimes we just set ourselves up for disaster just with our own thoughts? Okay, so Dave, how's it going to be for you if you would ever get to the point where you can't play golf? And he said, oh, I've, I've already thought about that, and I've just made my mind up that I'll just be happy anyway. Now, you know what most people would do? Oh, I don't know what I'll do if I can't play golf. My gosh, I'll be so bored if I just, you know. Huh? He's like, nope, I've already made my mind up. I can be happy anyway. You know what? Some of you need to take that little bit of advice right there. And instead of deciding you can't be happy if your situation doesn't change, come on, the minute you say, I cannot be happy if this doesn't change, you've thrown down the gauntlet in the devil's face. And he's going to turn the heat up. Remember the guys in the fiery furnace? The furnace got turned up seven times hotter than before. The minute you say, if this doesn't change, I can't be happy, the enemy will come against you with everything he's got to make you unhappy. But what if you say, if nothing ever changes, I'm going to be happy? Amen. Huh? What if, you, what if you say, if nothing ever changes, I'm going to be happy because my joy is not in my circumstances, it's in the Lord. You know, the mind can be very challenging to keep it going in the right direction all the time. It's important to know that God has equipped us to develop and maintain the right mindset. He will help us do that. Choosing the right thoughts will determine good things happening in our lives. Right thinking produces right living. They know what abuse is. They know what trauma is. They know what it is to struggle with identity. They know what it is to face conflict in their lives. They know what it is to struggle with bitterness and unforgiveness. And Joyce's story and her experience is so particularly relevant to them because they understand that, hey, this lady knows my context. I, I, I might not be able to speak her language. I might not be able to understand her country or her, her culture. But she knows my language of pain and abuse and hurt. And her testimony in their lives gives them hope for their own lives. If, if it can happen for that lady, it could happen for me. Being committed. Being committed is very important. Mobile phones being used by almost everyone on the continent. In fact, there are more mobile phones on the continent of Africa than there are people at the moment. Uh, so this is a really exciting platform, and people are accessing the internet 
well over 85% of people uh, through their mobile phones first. So we've got several pages recently that have been opened up in Nigeria, uh, several that have been opened up in Ethiopia, several in uh, uh, Kenya as well, and we're getting exciting responses from that. So it's one way that we can communicate directly to people uh, on a regular basis, but at the same time where there are physical needs, we respond particularly to those through feeding programs and water wells and anti-human trafficking work and skills development programs for young girls that prevent them from being sold into child marriage and secure their education for the rest of high school. I think for me, the thing that really touches my heart is in the midst of all the numbers, because we do, we work with some uh, crazy numbers and I think we get blown away uh, listening to some of the reach of people. Um, I mean, you know, the millions and the thousands and the hundreds of thousands, those figures that come back. Uh, what always catches me off guard a little bit and gets me uh, overwhelmed is when you have those one-on-one -on -one encounters with people and each and every one of them has a unique story, each and every one of them uh, has a unique uh, set of challenges that they've got to overcome, a unique set of pain. Uh, but God's particular love for each individual in each country, in each culture, in each language is what blows me away. Well, have you ever wanted to help hurting people, but you feel like you can't make a difference? I want you to know that you can. When we work together, we can feed hungry children, rescue women from human trafficking, and help victims of natural disasters. Uh, that's just few of the things that we can do. And I'm asking you, if you're not a partner with our ministry, I'm asking you to partner with us, to become a financial partner with the ministry. And that means that you do something on a regular basis, monthly or, or quarterly, but we need people all over the world helping us so we can keep reaching hurting people. And honestly and truly, what each one of us can do by ourselves is minute compared to what we can do if we put it all together. And so I'm inviting you to join the family today and make an amazing difference all over the world for God's glory. You can be a world changer. Zelfbewust te zijn heeft alles te maken met vertrouwen op God. Dit is precies waar het over gaat in het dagboek van Joyce. Je bent wonderlijk gemaakt. Vertrouw op God en weet dat je waardevol bent voor Hem. Hij geeft je de kracht om nieuwe dingen te doen en hiervoor je gaven in te zetten. God heeft je wonderlijk gemaakt om moedig en vrij jezelf te zijn. Met dit dagboek voor vrouwen ontdek je elke dag iets meer hoe kostbaar je bent voor God. Bestel je bent wonderlijk gemaakt door te bellen met 026 2022 100 of online via joins-meyer.nl slash wonderlijk. The Holy Spirit comes into our life to teach us, to train us, to lead us, to guide us, to convict us of sin, to convince us of righteousness. And I just want to encourage you before I go to the next point that you need to absolutely refuse to live with guilt, shame, blame, condemnation. Because it is not God's will for you. Meer uitdagende gedachten vind je op het Joyce Meyer YouTube kanaal. Het bekijken waard.